Okay. Oh. Okay, good morning, everyone. Okay, today we're talking about trick stealing. And the first juggler that steals tricks, I'm just, I'm just kidding, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> but just started calling jugglers out. You steal tricks, you steal tr Okay, we're talking about trick stealing. And first, before we even talk about that, we gotta talk about what even does that mean? What do you, what is trick stealing? Can you steal a trick? I don't know, I really don't know. I guess a better question that we gotta ask first is, can you own a trick? Uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's where I'm landing on that one. A uh, good friend, Nathan Biggs Penton, uh, he commented on one of my videos, like the last one, not the last one, the one before the last one. And he was just talking about inventing tricks and the terminology that he used when it comes to inventing. And he was he was saying a great point of you, you, you can't really like track down the origin of a trick because any trick that you learn, it came from someone else or even if you like thought of a trick, you probably were inspired by another juggler that was probably inspired by another juggler and then it just keeps going on and on. It's like an endless cycle. No matter what trick you invent, invent or find, discover, you kind of owe all of the credit to the jugglers that came before you. Like you could not be where you were without the jugglers that came before you. I see it very clearly because some of these jugglers that I'm talking to online, they've only been juggling like two or three years. They're coming up with some really innovative, creative stuff. They could only do that because people have been posting videos on the internet of innovative, creative stuff. They know that there's like more to do other than the under the leg and behind the back and all that, blah, blah, blah. Or like a more concrete example, without Bob Branson, Bram, 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 Bramson, Bram, Bram, without, without him popularizing the Bramston rolls, there would be no rolling, ring rolling, there would be no body rolling, and there would be no R2. Wouldn't that be tragic? We love that guy. Or like, look at, uh, look at all these cross arm pattern variations, you know? None of those would existed if it wasn't for um, those Egyptian hieroglyphs of the people juggling cross arms. Well, that's basically my point. Whoever taught you was taught by someone else and somebody else taught them and then before that, blah, 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 blah. That's just how it works. This isn't just saying that you can just go around copying other people's tricks. There's a reason why people are upset about this sort of thing, why it's a touchy subject. And sadly, big part of that is money. Like, at least for, for, at least for the world that I'm in, which is circus, performance, being a professional juggler that gets paid to juggle. In the circus, everyone, no matter the genre, has to stand out in order to find work. We have to, you know, be something more than just the tricks that we do in order for people to see us. In some people's uh, cases, the tricks they do are the things that, that makes them stand out and it's all about doing the most creative, innovative tricks. Some people use the combination of their skill sets to stand out. Some people use their technical ability to stand out. No matter what it is, they're using something to be unique and to like get the attention of whatever casting producer they need to get the attention of. Because if, you, if you're not doing your job, you're not working, you're not gonna eat, blah, 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 we understand how capitalism works. Don't really need to get into that. This is a juggling philosophy discussion. Now, maybe if we were in a world where money didn't exist and there was this beautiful utopia where you know you could just do whatever you want, maybe everyone would be coming up with original tricks and doing other people's tricks and there would be no drama when it comes to creation and stepping on other people's toes and like 
taking someone else's routine because it wouldn't matter. Everybody's just doing this for fun. It doesn't even matter. I mean, they, there are definitely plenty of jugglers who would argue that the artistic integrity of the juggling should be respected and that alone is why you don't want to steal someone else's tricks. And obviously different tricks have different levels of originality to them. So it gets kind of complicated when it comes to what is an original trick, what can you steal, what can't you steal. That's a super vague thing to say, especially in this situation where, you know, some tricks are really original. Some tricks are not that original. Some tricks are really uh, generic but have one little element to them that make them original. And it's and it's that element that if somebody took that element, that would be the stealing aspect of it. And I said it before, uh, I don't know if I really agree with it, about if you, you can, about that you can steal a trick but you can't steal a routine. Like what does that even mean? If that's the case, is it just the order of tricks that makes the, the, the routine original? You can't steal the order of tricks? Like that doesn't make any sense. Or like, how many tricks in a row make it an original sequence? Like, is it just one thing after and under the leg that, that makes it more original? Like, that seems kind of silly. Like, what if, what if you're one of those jugglers that their whole thing is like, they build up to just doing one trick, you know? Like a street performer or, or, or so. I don't know if street performers would be offended by that, but that's, that's how I consider a good street performing show. So, you know, you're building up to the thing. Like, I, I have plenty of iconic one-off tricks. Things that you just do, it's like one throw and it's the trick. For instance, my throwing the ball onto a club. That's iconic. It's not original, apparently. But there's, uh, there's other examples, right? Just check my Instagram. All of those are one-off tricks that are seemingly original. Like, uh, like for instance, my, uh, my seven club to a balance. I feel like that's my trick. I like definitely feel ownership over that. I haven't seen anyone do that. But guess what? I stole it. I saw Aaron do it. That's his name, Aaron do it. He uh, he did six clubs to a balance in the end of his graduation number. Granted, he did it. It was head to head, and he did it. Uh, it was six clubs. It's a little different, but still, that is like that is the inspiration for where that trick came from. I would still say it's my iconic trick. I still haven't seen anyone do seven clubs to a balance. I don't know why, it's not actually as hard as it looks. Please don't do it, please, please, please. That's all I have, everyone. Please don't do that trick. That's, that's like my baby. I can... or, or what about my, uh, my five club routine? My five club routine is basically two tricks. I do this like the wave multiplex trick that I've been doing for years and I do the multiplex hitting to the side thing. That's basically my whole five club routine. There's plenty of jugglers who do the multiplex uh, hit thing, like uh, La, 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 Lori, cause, uh, like, uh, like Lori from Juggling Mastery. Shout out Juggling Mastery. He comes up with some great stuff all the time. Like literally every day he posts something. But he does, uh, he does a version of that, the multiplex hitting thing. I don't feel like he stole it. Like, we both are making our money doing a trick that's very similar. I don't think either of us, I don't know how he feels about this, but I have no, like, qualms with him, him doing that trick. I've seen other jugglers do tricks very similar. I got that trick from, uh, from that one video, 10 liters of milk, uh, Alec Alexi. That's a great juggling video. He did a bunch of, like, multiplex hitting stuff long before I ever uh, ventured into that Toric. Toric? Ter territory. I missed the first part of the word. But like I was saying, my, my five club routine is two tricks. If, uh, if Laurie adds a wave trick, is that now stealing my five club routine? I mean, I guess, I, I don't know. I guess that's between us. We get to decide whether or not uh, either one of us stole a trick from the other. Now this, this conversation's been like uh, revolving around tricks tricks specifically but what about coming to like stealing props like somebody comes up with a really iconic prop a good example would be Michael Moshin's uh, triangle you know the triangle ba -ba -ba bounce 
thing. Plenty of people are doing that routine all over the world. Basically, trick for trick. Everyone agrees that he came up with the, the triangle. Even the people who stole it, they know and agree that he came up with it. Doesn't stop him from doing that. Doesn't stop him from making the money. What about uh, Greg Kennedy's cone? He, he definitely came up with that one and has that. Someone's doing that in, uh, in the, the Cirque du Soleil show to Totem right now. That's like a, it's part of their routine. Somebody's learning a routine that Greg Kennedy, I guess, is giving Cirque du Soleil permission to do. I don't know if there's like legal drama there. Please leave a comment if you know more about that. Super interested. I sure hope that he's getting some money for them doing uh, their, his routine. Now th those are like large props that are very iconic and it seems very obvious that somebody invented those and someone is stealing those. That like seems like a pretty clear situation. But in, in a case like uh, like Anthony Gatto's flipping the ring up onto the, the stick, please watch uh, Le, 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 Lukey, Lukey Bur Burridge. Please watch his video. He's got a, he's got a great video explaining all different versions of that trick and the different variations throughout the years. I don't know if the, the I guess, was it Wiley Coyote? Was that the, the original balance thing that he flipped uh, the thing? I don't know if that was his original trick when he did that. I really doubt it. I'm sure there's been plenty of jugglers who did it before him. But in that case, is it the prop itself that makes that trick original? I've been, I've been doing that trick with a, just a two by four and a giant nail. I feel like that's a very original version of doing a very old trick. I, I like it because I'm like constructing the prop on stage while I, like right before I perform it. I think that's really original and like a creative take. But I absolutely directly took it from Anthony Gatto's trick. That was fully the intention behind that. See how complicated this conversation gets? It's like there's so many layers to every single facet of, of what this thing is. We're talking about trick stealing. I don't even know if I was on the same subject anymore. I haven't even gotten into routine stealing, music stealing, costume stealing, joke stealing. It's it it, it gets complicated. So leave your leave your comment on I don't know responding to anything that I've said or if I missed something that you want me to, want me to talk about in a next uh, video. Leave a comment. Hope you enjoyed this video. I've been having a lot of fun doing these. Uh, share them with your friends. You know, share them with your circus school buddies. That's it. Goodbye, everyone.